as is typical uh, in the day before Thanksgiving, uh, the uh, traffic volume goes up in the afternoon, the number of crashes uh, goes up in the afternoon. Uh, that's fairly typical on a, on a normal day. Uh, you see a uh, large volume of crashes uh, during rush hour and that sort of thing, but uh, uh, it was particularly uh, exacerbated uh, the day before Thanksgiving. What you want to avoid are, are the serious injury crashes and fatalities, and the way to avoid those uh, is to really stay off the roadways at times when uh, those crashes are more prevalent, which is late at night. Uh, stay off of roadways where uh, there's just a greater danger uh, of, of injury, and those are really the two-lane you know, roads that, that aren't uh, necessarily straight and wide, uh, kind of the obvious uh, sort of thing there, to stay off of, of those type of roadways uh, and to stay away from situations where you're more likely to encounter drunk drivers in a uh, dangerous source situation, uh, which is indeed out there late at night on those two-lane uh, rural roadways. Uh, in those situations, the speeds are higher and the likelihood of a, of a head-on collision is higher, uh, and those are the kinds of things that uh, you really, really want to avoid. And certainly during the holidays, uh, when drinking is, is worse uh, than uh, typically the rest of the year, uh, you're probably more likely to find uh, more impaired drivers out there, and the likelihood of, in, of, of avoiding uh, such people, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's harder uh, effectively to avoid them, and, and, and really to, to solve that problem, you need to stay away from where they are. Checking the weather is a good thing. Uh, if you can avoid traveling in bad weather, then uh, that certainly helps uh, uh, helps your your odds of avoiding a crash. Um, but uh, uh, obviously, there are only so many factors that you can control, and uh, uh, you may not be able to avoid traveling in bad weather. You may not be able to avoid traveling at night, and you may not be able to avoid traveling on two lane roads. But uh, certainly, uh, the more of those things that you can take into account when you're planning your travels, uh, the better off, uh, better off you are. You're better off uh, almost always on a four-lane interstate highway uh, than you are on a, on a two-lane highway, rural highway, uh, and you know, you need to stay on those routes and so when your GPS or your uh, Google Maps or whatever routing uh, technique you're using tells you to get on an interstate uh, uh, and you might think well it's it's farther in distance to, to be on the interstate you're actually better off uh, from a safety perspective if you drive on the interstate and that's true even though the speeds are higher uh, on interstates uh, Sometimes you're, you're out driving on the interstate and you may be driving 70 or even 80 miles an hour uh, when the traffic is, is going a little above the speed limit. Uh, and while those speeds can kill, uh, the likelihood that you're going to be in a fatal crash is still considerably lower uh, on an interstate highway. And that's largely due to, to the fact that uh, you're not as likely to encounter uh, a driver headed the other direction in your lane. Uh, if someone's in uh, if someone's in that situation, they are likely uh, radically in the wrong lane and, and uh, uh, clearly while avoiding such people is certainly something that, that should be on your agenda, it's unlikely that you're going to encounter one.